Now, one thing I've never done is just trusted that the process will work its way through. Whatever is created will be not good or bad, but it'll be what it's supposed to be. I refuse to believe you could love me. My entire life, I've kind of moved around. I've never really felt like I belong. I refuse to believe you could love me like that. I think I carry feminine and masculine energies, and if I don't honor both, then there's something wrong with me. There's an imbalance. Hello, John. How are you? Good, good. Good. I love Die Kreuter's Sonata. Dig up the old man's wishing well. It's time to get started. I've done this all before. It's time we got started. That's my favorite song on the record, I think. And the reason is because of the process of like creating that, that song. When, you know, one thing I've never done is just trusted that the process will work its way through. And at the end, whatever is created will be not good or bad, but it'll be what it's supposed to be. I'll be gone in the morning. Ought to get started for a fade away. I had finished half of it. The second half of the song, that was just me making stuff up in real time. I just started to play something different. I'll prune this family tree, cause there's nothing left but greed, blood, money, and poverty. The reason that I named it that is because that's the Yiddish translation of Tolstoy. And what he was saying at the time was that we should not procreate. We should bring about the kingdom of God now by effectively ending humanity because it had gone too far. I remember reading the introduction to the Christmas Sonata. It's basically saying Tolstoy had lost his mind. When I read it, I didn't think that that was the case. He felt the desperation to do something about the world around him. He cared. Your single, I Refuse to Believe You Could Love Me, talking about a very nowadays topic, asking the gender question. Why did you want to add this to the picture of your music? I thought if we could get people together in a room who had different concepts of gender or sexuality, we could get these people together and if they could all agree that this, what, what we were doing together was okay, it was kind of a fun thing and it was really cool to see all of these people who feel marginalized, not feel marginalized, and to feel celebrated. The things that became funny and difficult during the filming of that is I didn't choose any of that. Like, it, none of that was my choice. The hair <laughs> became yeah. the main issue. The drag queens wanted me to wear a wig and other people wanted me to not wear a wig. And by the end of it, the stylist had said, okay, that's it, he's using his own hair because it's better. It was a really intense experience because I was really objectified throughout the whole thing, you know? And I kind of had to accept that and just let it happen. Refused to believe you could love me like that. Whoa. I think I carry feminine and masculine energies. And if I don't honor both, then there's something wrong with me. There's an imbalance. Like, I would identify in the same way that my grandmother or my great-grandmother would as being two-spirited. She would identify as Comanche, but that's really because she liked to fight with people. <laughs> she rode around on a Harley Davidson in the 50s. Like, she was a, a lesbian, but for she was like a toxically masculine person. So she, she was almost homophobic. It doesn't make, I know that sounds ridiculous, but she was like, you know, two-spirit and things. I mean. She, she would have fought anybody and she was just, you know, a mess, but she never, she never really settled anywhere. How come that this American kid from the South went to Ireland? I, I used to make jokes when I moved over here about having more in common with Irish travelers than I did with what they called settled people. But I think that's, it's true. Juana Parker was my great-great-grandfather, so he was the last chief of the Comanche. We know from Indians that they used to be very strong with their tribe while traveling a lot. How do you see yeah. that yourself? That's what I've done kind of without knowing it, you know? My entire life I've kind of moved around. I've never really felt like I belonged. I bought fertilizer and brake fluid. Where the hell am I 
impossible to trust. I always saw myself as a Mississippian, you know? I feel very connected to the land. And so, so I feel sort of displaced in a, in a lot of ways, but I don't think I'll ever go back. I, I would like to find home. I wonder more and more if it's if it's a reality or if it's a if it's an idea. And so there's a part of me like when my father, my biological father, when he was dying, he would say like, "Let's just go to Tahlequah." He wanted to die on on the reservation, you know. I mean, the really awful part about that is that the reservation isn't where our people are from. Oscar Wilde came here to make fun of you. Dress well and play bridge. So has this guy also been important to you? Oh, Lou Reed? Yeah. Lou Reed changed my life. Like, those lyrics, there was a there was a sound and um, what, what they brought back from Berlin, you know, it, it sort of saved American music and, and it introduced something more. When the forest of the night. I'd like to thank you very much, John. We all love Lou Reed. I love your music. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. What a morning.